Hello children, uh, today we are going to discuss file number 4, 5 and 6 of animal kingdom and these three phylums are worms, worms. So phylum number 4, 5 and 6 are worms. Phylum number 4 is flatworms, flatworms. Phylum number 5 is roundworms, roundworms. So we are discussing worms. Phylum number 4 is flatworms, phylum number 5 is roundworms and phylum number 6 is segmented worms, segmented worms. <coughs> so dear students we are discussing animal kingdom. We have already discussed some phylums. So today we are going to discuss phylum number 4 that is flatworms, phylum number 5 that is roundworm and phylum number 6 that are segmented worms. So flatworms they are called as platy. Platy stands for flat. Platy stands for flat and worm is helminth. Platy Hell means platyhelminths. So, what are flatworms called in biology? They are called as platy. Platy stands for flat and helminth stands for worm. So, roundworms they are called as nemati. Nemati stands for round and helminth stands for worm. Roundworms. Actually, they are cylindrical, but when we do the cross section and see under microscope, they appear circular or round. So, here we will take roundworms, they are called as nematic helminths, and the most advanced worms, segmented worms, they are called as annelida. Annelida. So, we have to discuss three types of worms. One is flat worms, they are called as platy helminths. Second is called as round worms, they are called as nematy helminths. And third is called as segmented worms, they are called as annelida. So, today we will discuss flat worms, platy helminths. So, flatworms, so today we will discuss flatworms. What are flatworms called in biology? They are called as platy helminths. First, we will discuss their general features, general features. general features. Feature number one is from evolutionary point of view, from evolutionary point of view, they are first so, from evolutionary point of view, they are first triploblastic animals, triploblastic. So, from evolutionary point of view, they are first triploblastic animals. 
ट्रिपला ब्लास्ट कर पाओ सो वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट इज दिस सो वी आर डिस्कसिंग जनरल फीचर्स एंड द फर्स्ट पॉइंट इज दैट फ्रॉम एवोल्यूशनरी पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू दे आर द फर्स्ट ट्रिपला ब्लास्टिक एनिमल्स सो द प्रीवियस फाइलम्स फाइलम पॉरीफेरा फाइलम सिलेंट्रेटा एंड फाइलम टीनोफोरा वेर डिप्लो ब्लास्टिक एनिमल्स सो पॉरीफेरा सिलेंट्रेटा एंड टीनोफोरा दीज थ्री फाइलम्स दे वेर डिप्लो ब्लास्टिक डिप्लोब्लास्टिक सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट फाइलम प्लेट वर्म्स और प्लेटिमेंट्स प्लेटिमेंट्स प्लेटी स्टैंड फॉर फ्लैट एंड हेलमेंट स्टैंड फॉर वर्म हेलमेंट्स प्लेटिमेंट्स और फ्लैट वर्म्स सो फ्रॉम द एवोल्यूशनरी पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू दे आर फर्स्ट ट्रिपलो ब्लास्टिक एनिमल्स सो द प्रीवियस फाइलम्स फाइलम नंबर वन फाइलम नंबर टू एंड फाइलम नंबर थ्री दे वे दे डिप्लो ब्लास्टिक डिप्लो ब्लास्टिक सो दिस इज एन एडवांसमेंट एडवांसमेंट ओवर पॉरीफेरा सीलेंट्रेटा एंड टीनोफोरा सो फाइलम प्लेट मीन्स आर द फर्स्ट एनिमल्स विच आर ट्रिप्लो ब्लास्टिक दैट मीन्स दे हैव थ्री जर्मलियस Endoderm, ectoderm, and mesoderm, like this. <clears throat> so diagram is like this. So they are triple blastic animals. First triple blastic animals. They have three germ layers. Three germ layers. Three germ layers. This is ectoderm. This is endoderm, and this is mesoderm. So phylum platyhelminths are the first phylum which are triploblastic. That means they have three germ layers. The outermost layer is called as ectoderm. The middle layer is called as mesoderm, and the innermost layer is called as endoderm. So the three germ layers. For the first time, we are seeing a phylum that is triploblastic, and the previous phylums were diploblastic. So we are discussing the general properties of phylum platyhelminths, and the first property is that they are triploblastic. property number 2 general property is that they are the first phyla they are the first phyla which is having bilateral symmetry bilateral symmetry so they are the first phyla which is having bilateral symmetry the previous phyla were for example porifera porifera they were asymmetrical cylindrata they were having radial symmetry tinofora they were also having radial symmetry 
So, phylum Porifera is the first phylum which is having bilateral symmetry. What is bilateral symmetry? When an organism is cut into two equal halves by only one plane. For example, if you want to cut me into two equal halves, how many ways are there? There is only one way. You have to cut me like this, this way. If you cut like this, the head will go up and the body will go down. But if we will cut like this, I will be cut it into two equal halves by only one plane. And the organisms which are cut into two equal halves by only one plane, that symmetry is called as bilateral symmetry. If I will draw a diagram here, diagram is like this. If we want to cut this organism, we can cut it like this, we can cut it like this, we can cut it like this and we can cut it like this. But we can cut the organisms which is having bilateral symmetry, we can cut them only in one plane and that symmetry is called as bilateral symmetry. And the diagram which I show on the board, we can cut it by more than one plane. Like this, this, this and this. And this symmetry is called as radial symmetry. So radial symmetry is found in Cilentrata, Tenophora and the phylum number 9. That is Echinodermata. Echinodermata. Radial symmetry. But the phylum platyhelminths are the first phyla which is having bilateral symmetry. Point number three, we are discussing the general features. They are the first phyla, they are the first phyla which is having. organ level of organization organ level of organization rather this is the only phylum which is having organ level of organization the previous phylums porifera they were having Cellular level of organization. These two were having tissue level of organization. But the phylum platyhelminths is the first phyla, rather the only phyla which is having organ level of organization. Means the organs start forming here. First it was cellular level, cells aggregate, but they do not form tissues. Here the cells aggregate to form tissues in these two, but here the organs are starting forming, the organs start forming, but they are not so well developed. But this shows evolution, this shows advancement. Here the cells aggregate, tissues are formed, now the organs start forming. So we are discussing the general properties of phylum platyhelminths. So they are the first phyla which is having bilateral symmetry, they are the first phyla which is having organ level of organization. They are the first phyla which is triploblastic. Property number four, they are acylovates. They are acylomates. They are acylomates. They do not have silom. Silom is a body cavity from outer body wall to elementary canal. And here the silom is missing. They are acylomates. Property number 5. They are having blind sac plant. 
the body plan is blind sac plan in the blind sac plan there is only one opening and that opening act as both mouth as well as anus so we can say only one opening only one opening so we can say digestive system is incomplete digestive system is incomplete incomplete so their body plan is blind sac plan there's only one opening so we can say digestive system is incomplete if we will see ourselves in our digestive system there are two openings mouth as well as anus so our body system is tube within tube body plan but here the body plan is blind sac plan there is only one opening so we can say digestive system is incomplete so these were some general features of phylum platyhelminths so these features were they are the first trophoblastic animals they are the first animals having bilateral symmetry they are the first animals having organ level of organization they are acelomates and they are having blind sac body plan they are students now we will discuss specialized features specialized features specialized features point number 1 so the specialized features of plat helminths are point number 1 body is dorsi ventrally dorsi ventrally body is dorsi ventrally flattened they are called is flat worm so their body is what body is dorsi ventrally flattened that means whose upper and lower end are clearly distinguished like dicot leaf what's in the dicot leaf the stomata on the lower side are more as compared to upper side so we'll say easily which is upper side and which is lower side so in the flat worms you can easily say which is upper end and which is lower end it's clearly distinguished so body is dorsi ventrally flattened that means whose upper and lower ends are clearly distinguished and body is leaf like body is leaf like or ribbon like ribbon like so the first specialized feature is that body is dorsi ventrally flattened that means whose upper and lower ends are clearly distinguished and body is leaf like or ribbon like property number 2 excretory cells this is very very important feature excretory cells not organs excretory cells are called as are called as flame cells flame cells so this is very important point often asked in competitive exams 
what are the excretory cells of platyhelminths called as they are called as flame cells or protonephridia protonephridia so the excretory cells of platyhelminths are called as flame cells or protonephridia and they are Ammonotelic. Ammonotelic. We are ureotelic. So our chief excretory product is urea, but they are what? Ammonotelic. The chief excretory product is ammonia. Ammonia. So we are discussing the specialized features of phylum platyhelminths. Number one is uh, the body is dorsoventrally flattened. Number two is excretory cells are called as flame cells or protonephridia and ammonia is the chief excretory product. So they are ammonotic that is they excrete ammonia. Third point, this is also very very important, very important this is, often asked in examinations, nervous system, nervous system, I will draw a diagram here, nervous system is like this. It consists of two longitudinal narrow cords joined at intervals by commissures. So this is the diagrammatic representation of nervous system. These are the narrow cords, these are the commissures and these are the ganglions. So this is the diagram of nervous system. Nervous system is ladder like, a primitive type of nervous system, but little bit advanced than cylindrator. So, nervous system, what does it consist of? Two longitudinal, longitudinal narrow cords, longitudinal narrow cords. This is the brain or ganglion. And these are the commissures. So, what does nervous system consist of? Nervous system consists of two longitudinal narrow cords. These are the narrow cords, and these two narrow cords are joined by commissures at intervals, and they form a ladder like nervous system. So, nervous system is ladder like, ladder like. So, what does this nervous system consist of? It consists of two longitudinal narrow cords. This is the one, and this is the one. And these two narrow cords are joined by commissures at intervals. So, they form a ladder like system. And this is the ganglion, or you can call it as a brain. So this is the diagrammatic representation of nervous system. What does the nervous system of platyhelminths look like? It looks like a ladder, ladder like. What does it consist of? It consists of two longitudinal narrow cords joined by commissures at intervals and it consists of ganglion. So we are discussing the nervous system of platyhelminths. It is ladder like, it consists of two longitudinal nerves joined by commissures at intervals and it consists of the brain or two cerebral ganglions. So dear students, we are discussing the specialized features of 
uh, phylum plate elements. We have discussed some excretory cells, nervous system. Now the last point in this is all animals in this phylum all animals in this phylum are bisexual or hermaphrodite hermaphrodite that is they form both the gametes male as well as female so they are bisexual hermaphrodite so all the animals in this phylum are bisexual or hermaphrodite they are carrying both male and female gametes point number 5 their fertilization is internal fertilization is internal internal fertilization point number 6 development development is direct as well as indirect both developments in some the development is indirect means larva is not formed in some the development is indirect means a larva is formed a larva is formed we will discuss it later on so these are some other features all animals in this phylum are bisexual or hermaphrodite they form both the gametes male as well as female so fertilization is uh, internal here Development is both direct as well as indirect. In some, the development is direct, and in some, the development is indirect, means a larva is formed. So, these were some specialized features of phylum platyhelminths. So, students, we have given the general features as well as specialized features. Now, we will give the classification of phylum platyhelminths. So, phylum plate helminths is divided into three classes, three classes. Classification. Phylum plate helminths is divided into three classes. You can remember it like this, TTC. TTC. Ticket check, like this you can remember. T stands for Terbularia. So the first class is called as Terbularia. The second class is called as Trematoda. Terbularia. The second class is called as Trematoda, and the third class is called as Cestoda. So, phylum plate helminths is divided into three classes. The formula is TTC. The first class is Turbularia. Turbularia. The second class is called as Trematoda, and the third class is called as Cestoda. This classification is based on this classification is based on free living or parasitic nature. This classification is based on free living or parasitic nature. Whether the worm is free living or it is parasite, endoparasite or ectoparasite. So we have divided phylum plate helminths into three classes. The first class is Turbularia, the second class is Trematoda, and the third class is Cestoda. So this classification is based on free living or parasitic nature.
so dear students we are giving the classification of phylum plat helminths phylum plat helminth is divided into three classes terbilaria trematoda and cystoda this classification is based on the parasitic nature or free living nature of the parasites whether the worm is parasite whether the worm is free living on this basis the phylum plat helminths is divided into three classes terbilaria trematoda and cystoda the first is terbilaria terbilaria they are commonly called as they are commonly called as planarians They are commonly called as planarians or idiworms. So the first class is Turbularia. They are commonly called as planarians or they are commonly called as idiworms. They are usually free living. They are free living. and their development is development is direct the development is direct and the third point is they have good power of regeneration they have good power of regeneration so we are discussing the first class of phylum plat helminths that is turbularia they are commonly called as planarians or idiworms they are free living they are not parasites their development is direct they have good power of regeneration and the best example is duxia duxia commonly called as planaria duxia so this is the first class of phylum plat helminths that is turbularia they are commonly called as planarians or idiworms uh, they are usually free living their development is direct that's no larva is formed here they have good power of regeneration and the best example is duxia best example our dear students we are giving the classification of phylum plat helminths and it has been divided into three classes the first class was class turbularia now the second class second class is trematoda trematoda they are commonly called as flukes they are commonly called as flukes they are both endo as well as ectoparasites ectoparasites so class number 2 is trematoda they are commonly called as flukes number 1 point flukes and they are both endo as well as ectoparasites their development is indirect development is indirect indirect development and we must remember one thing here that they have multiple larvae there's not only a single larva there is a multiple larvae formed here for example can you remember it like this miss rcm so these are the larvae first this larvae is formed then this then this then this then this what is m m stands for miracidium miracidium the first larva is formed that's called as miracidium the second larva is called as sporocyst sporocyst the third larva is called as redia the fourth larva is called as cercaria and the fifth larva is called as metacercaria so we are discussing the second class of phylum plat helminths that's trematoda they are commonly called as flukes they are both endo as well as ectoparasites their development is direct and they are having 
मल्टीपल आर वी मल्टीपल आर वी एंड हाउ कैन वी रिमेंबर द नेम ऑफ दीज आर वी द फॉर्मूला इज एम एस आर सी एम मिस आर सी एम यू कैन रिमेंबर वट इज एम स्टैंड फॉर मेरा सीडियम द फर्स्ट लार्व इज मेरा सीडियम द सेकेंड लार्व इज स्पोरोसिस्ट द थर्ड लार्व इज रीडिया द फोर्थ लार्व इज सर्केरिया एंड द फिफ्थ लार्व इज मेटा so this was the second class of the phylum platyhelminths we will give some examples here the best example is here first example is fasciola फैशोला हिपैटिकी या फैशोला हिपैटिकी स्पॉल्ड एज लिवर फ्लू एंडोपेरासाइट लिवर फ्लू सेकेंड एग्जाम्पल इज शिस्टोसोमा स्कॉल्ड एज ब्रेड फ्लू blood flu so these are the two examples of endoparasites endoparasites they live inside the body of organisms fasciola hepatici is liver flu schistosoma is blood flu and the third example is diplozoon this is ectoparasite ectoparasite found on the gills of fishes so i said that that class trematoda they are both ecto and endoparasites so these two fasciola hepatici cystosoma liver fluke and blood fluke they are endoparasites and this diplozoon they are ectoparasites and they are found on the gills of fishes so this is the class number 2 trematoda and these are the examples uh students we are giving the classification of phylum platyhelminths phylum platyhelminths is divided into three classes turbinaria trematoda and the last one is cestoda and they are commonly called as tapeworms cestoda class number 3 cestoda they are commonly called as tapeworms tapeworms they are endoparasites endoparasite means they are found inside the body and their development is indirect indirect development means larvae is formed the best example is tinea solium examples are tinea solium tinea solium means the poke tapeworm or yeah, the poke worm the poke tapeworm is found in the meat of poke <coughs> tinea saginata b firm b firm and the third example is echinococcus granulosa echinococcus granulosa dog tape found in the meat of dogs so we are discussing the class number 3 that cestoda they are commonly called as tapeworms they are endoparasites and their development is indirect means larva is formed here and the best examples are tinea solium the poke tapeworm 
tinea saginata, the bee firm, and echinococcus granulosa, dog taper. And they usually cause diseases. For example, this cause teniasis. So these are generally worms and parasites they usually cause diseases. So dear students, we have discussed the phylum plant elements, we have given the general characters, we have given the specialized characters, and we have given the classification, and we have discussed all the three classes of phylum plant elements. Thank you very much.